Hello there, and thank you all for joining us for a quick platform demo today. We'll try to um, get through this in about 30 minutes. And of course, um, as you get through this recorded platform demo, if you have any questions, feel free to reach out to our team um, to discuss things further. Um, so I guess before we jump in, I'll step back. We're of course gonna talk about bench prep and I will be able to get logged in to provide a demo. Um, but my name is Katie Babley. I work on the partnership development team here at Bench Prep. Um, and I am very excited to share with you um, what we are so excited to work with our partners on today. There are a few things that we'll focus on. Um, down at the bottom of the screen, you'll see personalized pathways, social collaboration, omni-channel delivery. Those are all quote unquote features um, that are part of what we do today, but what it all makes up is a modern professional learning delivery platform. So what we do is we will take our partners content and help them deliver it in an engaging way that helps them solve the challenges or meet the goals they've set for their learning programs. Here are a few more snippets about bench prep. Um, one, we were founded in 2009 and last year celebrated our 10 year anniversary. We're headquartered in Chicago, albeit a remote right now. We've been recognized as an award-winning platform. Most recently, we were awarded as a finalist in the 2020 Cody Awards and as a 2020 hot vendor by Aragon Research, by both of which we are very excited about. Um, and then last but not least, as this is something we're super proud of, more than 6 million learners have used Bench Prep's platform to attain academic and professional success, which leads me to my next slide. So before we jump into the platform, we also like to step back and talk about the why. Why did we build things the way we did? Why does Bench Prep or, or any organization that's focused on helping other organizations improve learning delivery exist? This is a slide, um, this is a study by Deloitte, you know, lots of numbers on this slide, um, but it speaks to the modern learner. And oftentimes when people speak about a modern learner, they think about one generation. And I prefer it to frame it in my head as a learner in the modern world. I shared this slide back in March um, and it was relevant then, talking about a learner in a modern world. But since then, given everything's changed, we're all remote, um, it really is more true today. I feel like I could put a blinking neon sign behind a the modern learner is different because our environment is different. And there are a few stats that I will outline here. So one, the average learner, or I guess the modern learner is very distracted. People unlock their smartphones up to nine times every hour. I know that if I didn't have a smartwatch, I would unlock mine a lot more. Um, the second thing is people are impatient. So on an online design, you have about five to 10 seconds to catch someone's attention before they click away. Now, those are two things where we're saying, oh, that's not fun, that's negative. Well, on the flip side, what we know about the learner in a modern world is that they're collaborative. 80% of workplace learning occurs via on-the-job interactions with peers, teammates, and managers. And then adding to that, again, on the flip side, on the positive side, learners are empowered. Over 60% of IT professionals reported that they paid for their own training out of pocket. So people now are more curious than ever and are craving learning opportunities as we're pushed to adapt. So those are a few statistics that help frame up the why. Why does Bentrep do things the way they do? Why should we as learning delivery professionals think differently about how we deliver content? Well, there's a lot of statistics on the slide to back that up. Now let's talk about the traditional LMS challenges. A traditional LMS wasn't created keeping the learning experience in mind. It was really created to focus on the management of content and learning that would happen outside of the platform. That is where LMS started. But because that is where the base or the foundation of our environment was built on, we haven't focused always on the effective learning. And the results of that are increased dropout rates, poor learner engagement, and lack of effective growth. That is what we're seeing as the number, I guess the top three challenges when we speak to customers or when we speak to partners or potential partners. And really why we do things the way we do. So to address that, typically when we walk through this presentation, we're talking about three different pillars where we believe if you think through these different foundational pillars, you can have an effective e-learning program. Um, today, because of the short um, nature of, our, our, of this recording, we'll only talk about pillar one, but nonetheless, pillar one is a very, 
very important. Um, so pillar one, the learner experience. What does a great learner experience look like? We're gonna talk through three things within the demo today that relate to a good learning experience. One is, is it easily accessible? Two, is it a one size fits one option? And then three, is it actionable and, and insightful? And again, we're gonna get logged in here shortly to walk through where bench prep helps bring those three things to life today to create a good learner experience. All right, so I'm gonna get out of my demo, switch over to this screen, and voila! What you all are looking at here is going to be Watermelon Express. It's our demonstration tenant. It's got some wonderful branding with the neon blue, the neon pink. Um, we, we do this just to draw attention to the fact that this can all be white labeled. You have a brand personality. You've got a product that you want to create and sell, or whether it's externally or internally to your learners. And we can white label that for you. We can configure anything on the screen. We can turn certain things off. Um, study plan doesn't have to be study plan. It doesn't have to be blue. It can be a different icon and so forth. So that's just one thing to state here. And we're looking at this from a learning, learner's, learner's perspective. So this is my homepage. This is where I can see a summary of all of the parts. I can see my overall progress within the course. Now, one of the things that we noted when we talked about the learner experience is that it needs to be easily accessible. Anywhere, anytime, any device. So that leads me to just show you all really quickly that I can take that same page and open it up on my mobile device. I don't have to necessarily open up a mobile app, which we do support that as well. But even in the web browser, I'm able to see an, a mobile optimized experience. Now, even in terms of content, so we're looking at the platform itself. In terms of the content, part of our implementation process is to take your content and ingest it to make sure that it is mobile optimized so that when a learner opens it up on any device, they're gonna have a good experience. In addition to that, you'll notice this cloud up here in the upper right-hand corner. That's gonna be the sync status. What that means is that I can take my application on a plane, on a train, you know, on a bus ride across a, a country, and even if I lose Wi-Fi or if I lose internet status, I'm able to continue to work on my course without that, that connection and then sync up later on. So easily accessible anywhere, any device. In addition to that, it's all gonna be synced across my devices. So I don't have to worry about losing my progress just because I've lost access to the internet. A couple of things that back this up, if we're thinking about, well, why is this important? Katie, you mentioned that everything you do has got a why behind it. Well. In addition to opening our smartphones nine times every hour, the average American spends about five hours a day on a mobile device. If you connect that with the fact that the number one challenge that talent professionals have identified is getting learners to make time for learning, one of the solutions to overcome both of those competing statistics is making sure that learning comes to the learner. Reduce the friction. So we're on our homepage. Again, it's a summary of the parts. I'm sure you all want me to continue scrolling down to talk through it. We'll do that at the end because I wanna cover the parts before I talk about the summary. So next we're gonna jump into the study plan. Again, this can be called learning path, learner journey, professional journey, whatever you all want to name it. And essentially it's where we create structure for the content. We will take your PDFs, your PowerPoints, um, your recorded videos, your webinars, and we'll break them down into micro-sized chunks and put them in a path so that the learner knows, okay, here's where I can start and here's what I'm gonna go through as I progress through the content. You'll see a couple other things here that are very personalized to the learner. One, I've got a study plan target date. This can be set by either the learner or the maybe training admin. I'm gonna set that deadline. What the course is also gonna do is say, okay, Katie, based on your existing progress throughout the course and the number of days you have to complete it, this is your pace. This is what you need to complete today and every day after that to stay on pace. Of course, I've got my overall study plan progress and then I can see what is next. Now, when we talked ab back about the learner experience, we mentioned that there are a couple things that are important. One, it's got to be one size fits one, or at least as close to that as possible. So we've got to add levels of personalization wherever we can throughout a course. It's not only going to keep learners engaged, but it's going to shorten the time to proficiency. The second is actionable and insightful. 
as a learner, I have a lot of data here, even though it's very simple data, it's not too complex to help me myself understand what action I can take next to take control of my learning journey. I've got 128 days. I'm 6% through my course. Here's what I need to do today to stay on track without guessing or procrastinating and scrambling at the end. Then of course, what is next? Removing that friction, making things easily accessible for the learner. Now, You'll notice here that we've got two different plans, structured and adaptive. The structured is going to take the learner through a very structured path through the course content from A to Z. It's like going from a book from start to finish. And the adaptive plan is where things get interesting. The adaptive plan is going to be a personalized journey through the content for that learner. As a learner, I can take a pre-assessment then based on that, the platform's gonna say, based on your strengths and your weaknesses, we're gonna start by prioritizing your weaknesses and then reinforcing your strengths. Now, what's the why behind this, Katie? Well, learners need some level of personalization, not just because it's nice, but because it's effective. Studies have actually shown that an adaptive or personalized experience can cut in half the time it takes to achieve mastery. So again, if we look back at that other statistic we talked about, when you combine that with the fact that the number one challenge for learning and development professionals is getting learners to commit time to learning and we're able to cut that time in half, it's another no brainer. So now let's talk about what's within those paths. So within those paths, again, we've got the learning content. Um, so for you all, that might look like PDFs. It might look like videos. It might look like you know, a bunch of questions. Um, in this case, we're gonna look at the lessons tool. So this is where we'll take some of that instructional content and we will break it down. I am looking at something that looks very much like a table of contents and we do that on purpose. We want learners to be able to self-direct as much of the course as they'd like to. Um, so as a learner, I can filter, I can search lessons, filter by category, um, whether or not it has a bookmark, related questions, and in this case, I'm gonna go ahead and hop right in just to take a look. We take whatever our partners provide to us as content and we'll put it in the platform for them. That's part of our learning design and strategy services. Um, and as I scroll down, I can bookmark, I can highlight, I can see a video and I can choose to play that. <laughs> and I can also make comments down here. As uh, my colleague Matt O'Gourt said, this is great. I can filter those. I can also ask an expert if I want. That's adding that social element. But as I go through the content, I'm also prompted to rate my confidence. So this is going to tell me as a learner, okay, take a step back, pause, and self-assess your understanding of that content. It might seem very simple, but instead of just hitting next, 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 or pressing play while I chop onions and call my aunt, I am able to rate my confidence after every single piece of content, not only so that I can gather that information, step back and assess that as a learner, I can use that as a tool later on, but I'm also sharing this information as my screen loads, Let's see? So I'm marking my confidence, medium, high, low. Um, let me go back to the table of contents. What I can also do as a learner is I can see course content related to practice questions. So let's say, for example, I mark my confidence low. Um, I'm reading this, I don't really understand it. I've already asked, you know, use the social tool to engage my peers and ask the question. I can also go to related practice questions to quickly, again, make things easily accessible. That's a good learner experience to test my knowledge. From there, it's gonna tell me not only is this incorrect or correct, but why? As a learner, it's really important to have that context in front of you instead of saying, oh, gosh, I got to go grab that textbook or I've got to go look at that webinar to see where this answer is. I want to know exactly why I got that wrong and continue on to answer other questions so that I can master that. This is going back to pillar one, the third thing that we talked about, which is actionable and insightful. Not only am I saying, hey, learner, this is, this is not correct, try again. I'm saying here is why, so that they can remediate that knowledge. 
So we've talked about the confidence rating. One of the things I wanted to tie to the confidence rating is the why behind this. Um, from an engagement perspective, we find that the 75th percentile of content confidence level users answers 36% more questions than the 25th percentile. And even further than that, the top 10% answers five times more questions. So confidence level ranking is, is very simple. It's very straightforward. It's not necessarily a, something that we see applied to programs across the board outside of bench prep. But what we found is it, it requires the learners to engage more, and then they complete more questions, they complete more activities. And then if we look at waterfall metrics and you work backwards from that, we know that the more activities a learner completes, the better the outcomes are gonna be. We also talked about the discussion tool here. So I scroll down, I see, I'm gonna copy my colleague Matt's note this is cool i'm using the discussion tool and it's tied directly to this lesson content not only will other individuals in this course see this if it's turned on of course because it's configurable um, it's also going to give me the opportunity to ask questions ask an expert and we found that the discussion tool also increases participation or engagement um, discussion participants are actually 15 times more active within the learning platform Outside of bench prep, if we want to talk about, okay, well, what have other studies shown about social learning or interacting with peers? Um, we've, we know or we found through a study that completion rates shot up 85% on an HBX, which is a Harvard Business School online education initiative, um, with the introduction of social learning. So that's completion rates of a course shot up by 85%. How many of you all, raise your hand, your virtual hands, would like to accomplish increasing completion rates by 85%. I know that we all would. Um, and another example is we found that a semiconductor manufacturing company said that their shift to social learning saved more than $250,000 a year. So thinking about, hey, have you implemented programs where if we could have enabled peers to interact with each other and learn from each other, could that have saved us money? Could that have shortened the time to proficiency? We know that data backs it up. So think about ways to create connections for learners, um, especially in the digital age. So we talked about lessons. We've seen examples of practice questions. There is a whole module dedicated to practice questions, but we tie everything together. So even if I'm just within the lesson content, I can practice those related questions. Tests are gonna be very similar. That's gonna be mock exams, or maybe it's a benchmark test that they take at the end of a certain section to maybe pass and move on to the next. Um, but the next thing I wanna jump into quickly is flashcards. So flashcards is exactly what they sound like. They are just a digital flashcard tool. Now, when I created flashcards, um, I had to handwrite all of them. So luckily, learners don't have to do that with this tool. Um, but I also, you know, shuffled them. And sometimes if I got them right, I would throw them out of the deck and continue to use the ones that I was getting wrong. And that's what the adaptive mode does. So this is, again, a very simple tool. But why are we showing it? Because this relates to easily accessible. We find that this tool is the most commonly used tool on a mobile device by learners. To add to that, we also have the ability for learners to create their own sets of flashcards and share them with their community. So this is learner curated content that's going to be shared with their community, adding to that social learning element, which we know can save money, can shorten or can increase, increase the completion rates and improve activity or engagement. So now I'm going to circle back. We've talked a lot about various tools within the bench prep platform. There is a lot more to it when you look at it. Okay, so is that everything? No, that's not everything. There is a lot more to it, um, but we wanted to focus on the pillar one, learning experience, the three different takeaways there, which is easily accessible, one size fits one option, and actionable incitement, and then show a few applications that relate to that. At the beginning, I also promised that we would circle back to this dashboard to look at the summary of the parts. So again, I see the number of days I have to complete this, my overall today's knowledge goal, my study plan progress, and then if I scroll down, I'll be able to see even more information. So this speaks to not only personalizing it for the learner, but making it actionable and insightful. A lot of times when learners go through things or when things, so that's very broad. Um, when learners go through content, one of the biggest questions for them is, I think I understand it, but I'm not really sure where I should focus on to achieve mastery. And that's why we created the strengths and weaknesses dashboard. 
I mentioned that everything within the platform is tied together. You saw that as an example when you saw a lesson and a practice question related, it, related to it. Um, but in this case, what the platform's doing over time is it's gathering all of that data. And it's saying, okay, Katie, based on your progress through the course and the questions that you've answered, you are intermediate in talent planning and acquisition, but you are an expert in business management and leadership strategy. So as a learner, this is actionable and insightful. I can go ahead and take action by focusing on this specific category, going to my lessons and filtering to find content based on that. To take it a step further, if we step back a little bit, if we zoom out a little bit and we think about the fact that all of this data is gathered from an organizational perspective, you as an organization can say, okay, 100% of my learners are excellent at business management leadership strategy, but only 30% of them are great at talent planning and acquisition. As I'm planning future content, as I'm planning future webinars or things to talk about at a conference, I can use this data to say, hey learners, here's why we made this decision, here's what we're doing about it, so that I can make sure that my programs are productive. So that's the bench prep platform. Again, high level summary of just a few of the features and some of the why behind them. So with that said, I'm gonna jump back into the presentation because I've got a couple other things to share with you all. There's another product that I didn't demonstrate today but I felt was important to touch on and that is bench prep engage. So our brains aren't built just to remember a fire hose of information. When concepts like spacing effect and confidence-based assessments are incorporated into our approach, we can actually make learning stick. So we've gone through that entire course. I knew that I had that many days, but after that course in just 30 days, 79% of that knowledge is forgotten. If I'm not reapplying it, if I'm not revisiting the content, once I've finished that course, gotten that certificate, whatever that might be, 79% of the knowledge is gonna be gone in 30 days. Again, a proven learning strategy to improve knowledge retention up to 170% is the spacing effect. So this is kind of the why behind it. Why Bench Prep Engage, which is this other product that we didn't demo, but we'll touch on. Well, again, we wanna make sure that your learning programs are effective and that all of the work that you put into that course doesn't go to waste within 30 days. Bench Rep Ascend, again, standard learning course path. I'm going through the content. If I'm using adaptive and personalized plans, maybe I'm cutting that time in half. But at the end of the course, I have the risk of forgetting 70% of that within 30 days, which is why we created Bench Prep Engage. So this starts a cycle um, at the baseline from the regular course and uses micro learning to send the learner within their cell phone, mobile device, or their email. They're going to see that in their... I guess on their home screen here, a notification. Hey, can you answer this question? I'm gonna answer that question, mark my confidence level because again, we're asking learners to self-assess where they're at. They're gonna see the solution and they're able to track that over time so that all of that knowledge that we gained in that, that, that big course that we completed or that big training that my company invested in isn't lost and we can help build that over time. An example for a use case for this is increasing engagement after exam completion. I completed an exam, I took a certification, but we know that if someone takes, let's say like a Salesforce certification, you don't want them to go to the first day on the job and have that certification and not be able to support that. So you take that certification and you're able to then continue to increase that engagement after that exam completion. So that leads me to a question slide that's going to help you walk away with five questions to consider as you think through your learning program. Um, one, is it available on any device? Two, can I configure it for a variety of products? Three, can I personalize the learning experience for each professional? Four, am I engaging my learners each step of the way? And then five, am I getting the data I need to optimize my programs? So those are just five questions to ask yourself today as you think through your programs. As I said at the beginning of this I think it's about 20 minute recording. Um, if you have questions or wanna learn more about the tools that we shared today, feel free to reach out to our team, um, request a tailored demo. The way we typically approach things is, hey, we've got a whole toolbox that we can help share with you, but we wanna first understand what you're trying to solve for, what you've got in your existing toolbox today, and then we'll put together a tailored demo for you. Um, but if I can share anything, it's, it's walk away and ask these five questions um, to assess how effective your learning program is. 
and thank you. Normally I'd ask if there's any questions, but because this is a recorded webinar, there's no one that's gonna ask me questions aside from my dog who's staring at me asking when it's time for dinner. Um, so thank you all for joining today. Feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn and let me know what questions you have. And I hope that you enjoyed learning about Pillar One, the effective learner experience and how we apply that within the platform. And we hope to talk again soon.